this afternoon, I intend to table a resolution in the chamber under the Alberta sovereignty within a United Canada Act. We developed this legislation to shield the province from federal intrusions, and we're using it now because the consequences of this particular overreach would be so severe. Alberta will bear the largest share of the expenses required to meet these absurd targets, and consumers and businesses will see their bills soar. If the federal government has its way, many people will be left without electricity that they can pay for on a power grid that will fall short or even fail in a typical Alberta winter or summer. We refuse to go along with this plan. Well, Albertans must have access to affordable and reliable power when and where they need it. It's a matter of health and safety and a matter of financial reality. No one should have to choose between paying their utility bills or buying needed groceries. But it's also a matter of law. Our province needs more baseload power from natural gas. Alberta does not have extensive hydroelectric resources that they enjoy in other provinces. We don't yet have nuclear as they do in Ontario, and that will take a lot of time and money to get there. Natural gas is the foundation of our electricity system in Alberta, and it will be for decades to come. If we don't have enough natural gas baseload power in the coming years, we will have brownouts and blackouts in the dead of winter and in the hottest days of summer. And electricity prices will be astronomical. It's simply too massive a risk for Albertans and Alberta businesses, and it's a risk that we are facing thanks to Ottawa. The clean electricity regulations as they are currently written cannot and will not be allowed to come into effect in this province. Ottawa has not yet back down despite clear modeling from independent regulators that shows their plan is impossible. Their negotiations with provinces have been biased by their elect electoral ambitions and missed the nuances of our unique energy only market entirely. Danielle Smith will be uh, uh, theoretically uh, invoking or, or giving notice of her plan to invoke the Sovereignty Act. Um, the so-called Sovereignty Act is a, an illegal stunt. Unfortunately, it is a stunt with real-world consequences. It undermines investment certainty. It challenges our respect for the rule of law. It breaches treaty rights all over Canada, but especially here in Alberta. And it declares to the world that we just don't care about tackling climate change. So um, it is a, a, a bad move for Albertans and, and, and we think that Danielle Smith should not move forward with this and instead focus on a practical approach to building our economy. We have been uh, working in good faith with the government of Alberta for many months now as part of a working group to explore both the clean electricity regulation as well as the oil and gas cap. And not once in the many meetings that we've had with them did they raise the Sovereignty Act motion. Uh, which jeopardize uh, the collaboration that we've had so far. But like the province of Alberta, we agree that we need to, to develop a clean grid that is affordable and, and reliable. Of course we agree on that, uh, because it, it's the foundation of a prosperous and clean future for all Canadians. The draft regulations that I introduced this summer provide a lot of flexibility for many jurisdictions across the country who still use fossil fuels and more specifically natural gas to continue doing so after 2035. There is no cliff, as Premier Smith has said many times, uh, for, for those jurisdictions using natural gas. But it is true that we want to limit as much as possible the use of fossil fuels as part of our grid in 2035. But it's not a fossil fuel free grid.